Hi folks, this is Dr. Marshall. I'm going to take just a few minutes of your time today to introduce you to one of our library online databases. And the reason why I want to introduce you to this database is because it is one that is commonly used in colleges and universities all around the world. And at this stage of your academic career, while it might not be one that you're familiar with, it is probably one that you'll want to be familiar with uh, as you move forward. So consider this uh, mini lecture, not necessarily uh, important for a sociology class, but important for your college career in general. So, all right, let's get a start. So once you're logged into your My EFSC homepage, you're going to want to access the library. Now your page may not look exactly the same as mine, but it'll look close enough that you should be able to follow along. So click on that button that says Library Resources, and that's gonna open up a page for you that looks like this. When you get here, you're gonna to wanna to go to Databases A through Z. Once you reach Databases A through Z, just scroll down to JSTOR and access JSTOR. All right, now once you're here, what I want to tell you is this, I always do an advanced search. There are hundreds of thousands, if not maybe even topping a million articles in this database. And so you want to try and narrow down your focus as much as possible so that the articles you return when you search are at least helpful and relevant to your specific topic. So let's just try a little uh, search here and see what we come up with. So we're going to do a keyword search and um, I don't know, let's search for um, United States immigration patterns. All right, we want to make sure that we see here content I can access. If you did have other uh, boxes that you wanted to do a keyword for, you could add them here. If you know an author, you can also add that here. All right, we want to narrow our results to articles. We definitely want English only, otherwise you will return articles in all kinds of languages. All right, now we don't need any of this other information here, publication date, journal or book title or ISBN. What we do need is some journal filters. Now, each one of these broad categories contains a set of journals. And within each of those journals, you will find um, hundreds and hundreds if not thousands and thousands of articles. Now before I go any further, let me just explain to you how we use the term journal. It's not like you're probably commonly used to where you sit down and write something out. So a journal in the academic sense is kind of like a magazine. It's published periodically, uh, maybe published only two times a year, or it could be published monthly. It just depends on the actual journal. And so each of those journals, depending on when they're published, will have a series of articles in them that have been written by academic scholars, people who are experts in a specific discipline or who have an interest in studying a specific thing that's happening. And so they will write the article and they will send it out to their peers to have it vetted, to have it checked, to make sure it's reliable and valid. And once they get the okay from their peers, it will get published in one of these periodical journals. All right, so as an example, if we just look at the one for African American studies, there are 20 different journals that you could take a look at if your topic had something to do with African American studies. All right, so what we want to definitely do is we want to go down and we want to click on sociology. Notice there are 152 different journals in the sociology database. There may also be others that you're interested in. For example, population studies, since we're looking at immigration patterns, we might want to look there. Public policy, we might want to look there. So you don't wanna just do sociology, you wanna do 
anything that might be on the list that looks like it might have something to do with your topic. All right, so now we're going to submit our search and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, we've come up now with 10,830 different articles that have something to do with those keywords that we've added. So we're always going to return by relevance first, and you might want to just take a look at a few pages of these articles to see. Uh, I think that first one that came back might be interesting, but I do see that it was published in 2012, so it is getting a little old. I do, however, either want to save it or just quickly download it and take a look at it to see if it might be something I'm interested in. And what I want to do right now, really all I want to do right now, is scan the abstract. And I want to see if there's anything in that abstract that might be interesting to me for my paper, for what I think my paper is going to unfold like. And for me, this one might be something I want to use. And so I'm going to just save it into a folder and I'm not reading anymore at this point, I'm moving on. Now, once I've looked at a couple of them as sorted by relevance, I also do want to go back and search by oldest. And the reason why I want to do that is because sometimes searching for those oldest documents will show you when that particular topic first came into the research uh, community. We first started studying it at this point in time. And as you can see, there's an article there from 1894. So again, I might want to pick up a couple here and see if there's something that one might be interesting from 1898, Legal Status of California. Uh, there's another one here, the Foreign Policy of the United States. So I might be able to pull a few little things out of those older documents. So again, I'm just going to save those. I'm not going to read them deeply at this point. And then I also want to go back and search by newest. Let's see if there's anything there that I might need. All right. That one might be interesting, criminal justice, contact, and inequality. So I might want to look at that one, and that's a new publication. You know, generally speaking, once you've looked for those oldest, you really want to stay within five to seven years of the current date. You don't want to go for anything that's sort of older than that unless you know it to be something that is very, very important and essential to your topic, then you'll want to include it. Maybe it's a scholar who's very well known, who has a large body of research, and you wanna go back and find something that they did in the past. All right, so once I've done that and I've got myself saved several articles, then I'm going to go look at those articles and decide which ones I might wanna use in a paper, okay? So don't be intimidated by JSTOR. It sometimes does take uh, a while to return articles that you want to look at because it really is a skill knowing what keywords to uh, enter. So if you find that you want to use JSTOR to add an article or two to your papers for this class, I think that's fantastic. If you find that you get uh, turned around when you're in JSTOR and you're not, you're getting frustrated because you're not returning what you want to return with your keywords, definitely reach out to me. I'm absolutely happy to help you find a few articles that might be relevant and I will send them to you directly so that you can see if you want to incorporate them. Okay, I hope this helps. Take care. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.